Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we are now moving to actually a uh, <clears throat> brief launch ceremony of ISA's uh, Western India chapter that would be located in Pune. And for this launch ceremony, we invited uh, uh, Mr. Randeep Singh Khokar, who's a general manager of Tata Motors, to, to speak uh, uh, his message. Uh, before we put him uh, live for his uh, message, I'd like to give a brief introduction of Mr. Randeep Singh Khokar. Mr. Randeep Singh is head of electrical and electronics engineering passenger vehicles at Tata Motors Limited. And he is responsible to direct, manage, and control the engineering and development activities of electrical and electronic aggregates for automobiles at Tata Motors. His research interests include connected cars and IoT, a subject that's very close to all the ISA members' heart. Uh, Randeep has over 30 years of experience in automotive industry prior to Tata Motors, where he has been for about 15 years now. Prior to that, he worked at Daimler, which is now better known as Mercedes-Benz in Germany. And also he works with the Telco prior to that, which is now renamed as Tata Motors in Pune. Randeep is co-chairman of the Society of Indian Automotive Engineers, CM, and Connected Vehicle Group. He is also a member of the Governing Council for STPI's Center of Excellence for Automotive. He has presented several papers in global forums, and Mr. Randeep is also a holder and mentor for several patents in the field of automotive, electricals, and electronics. So since ISA is uh, India Electronics and Semiconductor Industry Association, we thought someone from ESDM ecosystem, from electronics and automotive electronics ecosystem like Mr. Randeep Singh will be the right person to give us a nice message uh, when we launch our chapter for Western India based out of Pune. I'll be turning on to now Mr. Randeep Singh Pokhar. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. K. Krishnamurthy CEO and President IESA for inviting me to speak in this session at the 16th edition of the IESA Vision Summit. The last time I had an opportunity to speak at the IESA Summit was at Bangalore in 2015. I was pretty impressed by the role that IESA was playing and the platform that it provides to help bring so many of us from the electronics ecosystem together. It feels great to join you again for this summit, and I do echo your firm belief that this will be the deciding decade for India's ESDM industry. That said, let me introduce myself. I am Randeep Singh Koker from Tata Motors. I head the electrical and electronics engineering for passenger vehicles at the Engineering Research Center of Tata Motors, which is physically located at Pune. The launch of the IESA Western Region Chapter, representing the states of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Goa, therefore assumes importance due to the physical proximity to us. Over the last decade, the automotive industry has witnessed the wave of ever-increasing electronics content in the vehicles, and we find ourselves at the cusp of a further similar increase in the next decade due to newer feature introductions supported by electronics. The ramifications that this would have in the next decade will be different as compared to the activities experienced hitherto in the previous one. I shall be alluding to this a little later. The automotive vehicles are becoming an amalgamation of technologies from the verticals of IT, aerospace, consumer electronics. At the same time, the vehicles also need to seamlessly merge with the electronic environment and business ecosystem while offering itself as a node in the Internet of Things. The focus at the automotive industry is transitioning from horsepower to processing power. In India, for the car buyer, an important parameter when choosing to buy a particular vehicle used to be which is colloquial Hindi meaning, how many kilometers does the vehicle run with a liter of fuel? This conversation would move on to meaning what's the processing power 
of this vehicle. The automotive industry needs to brace itself for this transition. This can only be achieved by meaningful partnerships with the electronics and semiconductor industry. In the automotive industry, we typically divide the electronics architecture in a vehicle into the domains of powertrain, chassis, safety, convenience, comfort, infotainment, connectivity. Now, depending on the domain, different models of engagement between the OEMs and partners from the electronics industry are emerging. While the classical tierization approach of a tier one, tier two, tier three shall continue, certain domains are experiencing a change. Traditionally, the semiconductor suppliers have been occupying the tier two role. Going forwards, for certain domains, there will be direct engagement between the automotive manufacturers and the semiconductor suppliers. This will be required to achieve the specific need which the automotive vehicle manufacturer wants to provide to the end customer for achieving differentiation and ultimately customer delight with quick turnarounds. For example, domains such as comfort and infotainment, which are influenced by fast changing consumer electronics industry shall be the early harbingers of this approach. The next level of collaboration would be for the auto OEM to engage with the semiconductor industry to build chips or provide IP services for building the chip. The further extreme is that an automotive OEM designs a chip, sends it to the foundry, and it comes back as a chip. The supplier chain interaction is therefore then owned by the vehicle OEM as compared to the typical tiered approach. This helps push the boundaries and control the speed of the development in the way that the OEM wishes to. It would be prudent to mention here that the functional safety and cybersecurity features enabled by hardware are helping achieve the next level of implementation faster. It will not be out of place to mention here that the automotive industry has enjoyed the advent of electronics and is utilizing its capability to offer an enriched experience to the end customer. Like many things in life, there are two sides to the coin. The automotive industry is feeling the heat due to semiconductor shortages. Never could it have been imagined that the auto industry has become so dependent upon the capacity of the semiconductor industry itself. Supply chain disruptions have caused OEMs like us to understand more about the semiconductor industry. Each semiconductor supplier that we have spoken to has no understanding of the roadmap that the OEM is working with. We hear them say, I don't know where my chips go in your car. I supply through distributors. I don't even know the tier one sometimes, let alone the car manufacturer. So recent conversations with tier one, tier two, tier three in the supply chain are revealing aspects of wafer supplies, packaging, etc. We were also surprised to learn about the circuitous logistic routes. There was a case where a certain semiconductor supplier had discontinued manufacturing a certain type of nanometer node. This was then outsourced to another fab, leading to an additional link to the logistics chain. So the chip was traveling from the fab to the semiconductor supplier through the distributor, through the tier one, through the vehicle OEM, so the chip travels a lot before it makes it to the car. All this means that there is a need felt to change the way the automotive OEM and the semiconductor industries are engaging. OEMs like us would need to create data structures which map the vehicle applications to the physical parts used in the vehicle, to the electronic suppliers, all the way down to the fabs basically profiling the supply chain. Engineering teams at the auto OEM who are dealing with new developments would start getting a view of what chipsets are being called for and hence map out the demand and loading aspect on the fabs. As we all know, changing an SOC from A to B in an ele electronic control unit is a mid-term to long-term exercise, which needless to say, is an avoidable exercise if it is being done just to remedy the supply chain disruptions. Some semiconductors 
ASICs in particular are being manufactured at only a single location. If any disruption happens, it becomes very difficult to deal with. So ASICs would tend to be avoided till the capacity is ensured. OEMs will need to integrate the plethora of individual con electronic control units to reduce the overall count per vehicle. Newer vehicle level electrical electronic architectures would need to take into account the need for fewer control units, but with more powerful processors. The OEM would need to do the function partitioning to suit to the speed of communication and acceptable latencies. What is unique about the automotive industry, which is very different to the consumer electronics industry, is that our lead times are huge to cater to the number of validation cycles that we need to go through. Compliances to these, as well as to the regulatory agencies governing the auto industry, leads to long lead times. I would like to end by giving a message to the members of the semiconductor industry. We would like to do more with you. We would like you to sit at the table when we are discussing with the tier ones when doing chip selections. You too stand to gain in getting relevant inputs for design of the chips at the attribute level from OEM's application perspective. Finally, I would like to thank Ashok Chandak and Niranjan Pol for the efforts that they would be putting in to not only help newly launch the IESA Western Region Chapter, representing the states of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Goa, but also make it contribute towards IESA achieving newer heights in his firm belief that this will be defining decade for India's ESDM industry. This is Randeep Singh Koker from Tata Motors, Signing off. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye. Thank you, Randeep. Uh, thank you for giving us the overview of uh, Tata Motors, automotive electronics, and also the challenges that automotive industry is facing today with respect to semiconductor supply chain uh, disruptions. Uh, at IESA, we understand those concerns and, you know, uh, just wanted to inform everyone that uh, as we speak, I think uh, more than 20 plus new fabs are being uh, put up around the world and hopefully by later half of 22, things start to become better. And we are happy to always collaborate with uh, tier ones as well as with the car OEMs. Yeah. So. We are now putting up our Western India launch video, Western India chapter at Pune uh, launch video. So let's just wait and see the launch video. Well, so that was the launch of IESA Western India chapter at Pune. And uh, with that presence in Western India, I'm sure IESA members will have more close cooperation with automotive and rest of the industry present in Western India. So now we there is a time for a break now. Uh, our next session starts at 1130.